Welcome everyone to the FDA drug approval process. I am Gary Freeman and I have been involved in the drug development process now for over 30 years, working in pharmaceutical companies as well as serving as a consultant to the industry. Today we're going to be discussing that process with the FDA in the United States, including the approval process for marketing this investigational product. Our learning objectives today are several. We're going to navigate the FDA approval process for a new drug. What does it take to get an investigational product from the lab bench all the way through to an NDA, which allows us to market the product? So we will talk about what is an IND, investigational new drug, and we'll identify what it involves. What are the contents of that? Some of you might be around that. Some might be involved in each, some of the steps of it. So it's helpful to know just what the process is and where you might fit in that stream. If we do hit on any acronyms today that you're not sure of, especially those that only have a year or so of experience, please don't hesitate to stop us and ask us what that means. Because in this industry, we have a lot of abbreviations and acronyms. And you'll hear this in your company all the time. And people just assume that everyone was born with this vocabulary. And that's not at all the case. We'll also look at what happens after we develop the product. The IND allows us to test the product in humans. We'll look at the NDA, or new drug application, which is what happens when we've completed the human testing and we approach the regulatory authority for permission to market the product. So we'll look at what that takes. What does the application look like? And why is it so important that we test it in such a way that we can market that and label it appropriately? This is why we need to include the marketing people in our development scheme. Because we, if we don't test it in a certain environment, we're not going to be able to label it that way. And they may not be able to sell that to the physicians. So we need to include them way up front. What is the market leader? What should we be testing this product against? So that when we do go out to market, the physicians will be familiar with what our comparators were. What is the advantage to purchasing and using this product versus another? And lastly, we'll talk about that review process within the FDA. What does it take? If I might ask, what therapeutic areas are you folks working in? Give me a chat as to what therapeutic areas do you work? What kinds of products are you starting to promote or test? Neuroscience, cardiovascular, okay, those are heavy duty issues as you know. Neuro. Okay, terrific. Thank you so much. So an overview now will be to talk about the FDA's role in drug development. What do they do? We'll explain the logic of the whole system. It is very logical, although at some points of time one might wonder. We get caught up sometimes in the munitia. We're going to cite the basics of the non-clinical drug testing. The reason here is that we need to understand what's going to take place before we even get to the clinic. How do we get this IND moving? What does the FDA expect us to do? We'll discuss briefly the requirements then for getting an effective IND. And if IND is actually never approved, it's called effective. We're going to cite the basics of clinical trial design and the structure it takes including the three clinical phases, one, two, and three. These are the stages that we conduct in our testing prior to getting an NDA. Once we have the IND, that will allow us to test the product in the one, two, and three phases. We'll then talk about the next step, which is the requirements for the new drug application. What do we have to do to get the paperwork through the FDA to allow us to market this product? It has to be marketed at the dose and the regimen that we've tested it in. I've worked in several cardiovascular therapies uh, through my career, and many of them started out with intravenous or intramuscular applications for extreme cardiac issues while the person is in the ICU. And then as they proceed along the course of treatment, we'd like to send them home. And we're not going to be able to send them home with an IM or an IV so likely. So we might like to switch over to an oral formulation so that they could take that while they're at home as an outpatient. 
it's not as easy as just switching over the product. We have to test it completely in both formulations. And unfortunately, some of those that I've worked on worked very well as an IV, but did not work as an oral. So it's not always possible to use the same drug throughout the person's treatment. That causes complications too. And then is there any interaction if they've taken one product for a long period of time in the ICU and now are starting to take something else that they could take at home? So there's a lot of complications that may come into to play with some of these disease states as well.